Hi everyone, welcome back to the Sea Morning Show. It is just past 8 in the a.m. and leads us right to our second discussion of the day. We're all talking all about economy, it seems, mm -hmm. today, right? And we're going to talk about digital economy, the payment system technology in both banking and non-banking sectors continue to grow rapidly. And thus, this has allowed for the full implementation of digital services. That's right. Various culinary shops, transportations, and parcel delivery services have allowed customers to use Digitech apps to make payments, which boosts efficiency and security, which in turn leads to higher convenience. Indeed, and fintech or financial technology along with digital banking have become the new methods of making financial transactions. So, how does fintech affect the development of our digital economy? Well, today we're going to try to find out with Koala co-founder and Deputy CEO Tommy Martin. Good morning, Tommy. Thank you for joining us Hi, here today. Good morning, Paul, Rasia. Uh, nice to be here. Great to have you. So let's, um, let's just pretend or let's just assume that a lot of people aren't too familiar with the latest technologies. Let's talk about fintech itself. It's used to describe new technology that seeks to improve and automate the delivery and use of financial services. Can you explain a little bit deeper as to what financial technology is in layman's terms and how it affects us as consumers? Yeah, yeah. So, so fintech essentially is a combination of both financial and technology, right? Mm. And I think the very simplest word is basically describe a digital, a digital delivery of the financial services product to the customer. Mm. Okay. Right? But uh, to be honest, you know, like while fintech has become a buzzword probably in the past seven to eight years, yeah. mm. Fintech already something that already exists for many more years, right? For like 20, 30 years, right? Uh, I'm sure all of us here are very familiar with EDC, credit card, debit card, and so on, right? So these are the form of the technology that used to transform the financial services, especially in the banking, right? That sort of like becomes something that is very common for us. Mm -hmm. right. And obviously here we are talking the next generation of the uh, Fintech, uh, which started around 2008. Uh, started through the payment gateway kind of development, mm -hmm. e-money, and then probably in 2016, that's where we start seeing a lot of like peer-to-peer -peer lending kind of development. And in 2018, 2019, we're seeing a lot of wealth management, insurtech kind of companies, right? Mm. Uh, and, and probably in the future as well, the definition of the fintech can be even uh, different, right? And maybe during that time, it will be very much different by AI, chat GPT, and mm -hmm. so on. Right, and we're, we're talking about uh, fintech as the definition word, but that definition itself continues to evolve all the time. Right. I remember like 2001, I remember very clearly the first time I was able to access my bank accounts mm -hmm. online mm -hmm. just to see ba the balances. Mm -hmm. That was like financial <laughs> technology at the time, mm -hmm. yeah. So you mentioned there is peer-to-peer -peer tech. Can you mention, uh, can you elaborate more on the types of uh, the, the, the topic within the fintech and uh, where does Koala sits within the landscape? Okay. Uh, so, so fintech here, I would say uh, broadly can be categorized uh, across the payment, investment, wealth and insurance, right? Mm. Okay. And even in the insurance, to be honest, it can be very broad, right? If you look at the insurance technology, you can talk about technology to transform the value chain of insurance. Mm -hmm. it, can, it can start from distribution. How can we make access of insurance to become more easy for the customer, whether it's online or offline. We can talk about like how technology can transform the underwriting, mm -hmm. meaning that we can create a new set of product for the customer. Especially, I think today, when we talk about insurance product, most, most of the product in top of the people mind is still uh, around motor vehicle, health and life, right? Correct. But now we, we, we want to transform that, we want to create more variety of the product, mm -hmm. right? We want to be able to embed insurance into the uh, into the customer lifestyle. That's why we need to help innovate on that, right? Mm -hmm. Can be also on the claim side, uh, because claim again, uh, this day, customers are very different compared to like 20 years it ago. It used to be such a complicated process. I don't know what it's yes. like Yes, and obviously, uh, <laughs> this day, you know, like our, our tolerance, I would say, is like we want everything to be done in minutes. Instantly, in of yeah. course. Or even instantly and so on, right? <laughs> and therefore, innovation needs to happen. Yeah. Right. So, from your website, right, Koala is a startup in the field of insurance technology with a mission to socialize insurance through a combination of new product development supported by machine learning based claim processes. So, uh, what makes Koala different from other insurance providers? Yeah, uh, so I think for, for us as an as a insure tech company, right, uh, we, are, we are trying to solve the problem, I would say, end to end. Right, because if you if you look at the at the gap in the insurance industry today, they are gap from the education, gap from the awareness, right? Mm -hmm. And I think that's why we are we are we are running uh, what we call the B two B two C kind of model. We work together with the 
digital platform and we work together with the fintech companies as well to try to reach out to the customer and introduce a new set of insurance product to them. I think through, through this, hopefully, we can educate customers about insurance product. And I think on the monthly basis, for example, today, we are selling around two to three million uh, policies. Right? And I think uh, once they are educated, uh, this is where they, they will look for a more, I would say, a more proper insurance product. Right. Uh, which more suitable to health, life, motor vehicle, and so on. So, when you say that some of the challenges is awareness, uh, what would be a direct solution to? Let's say I'm not familiar with insurance products, and which one would suit me? So, how could fintech make that easier in my life? Yeah. So, uh, so if you look at from the journey of the customer today, right? Um, not many customers today will actually search for insurance online, for okay. example, mm. right? because that's not top of the mind. Mm -hmm. But if you see the rise of the digital economy in the past 10 years, right, a lot of people are buying their good services online, whether it's to do with the flight ticket, hotel accommodation, mm -hmm. gadget, uh, latest gadget, and so on as well, right? And when, when, when they actually go and buy this kind of product, this is where we try to embed insurance, right? Mm -hmm. uh, a complementary insurance that can help them understand insurance in the easy manner. For example, if you're booking a flight, top of mind, you always think about flight delay. Yeah. So can we provide you a delay insurance, uh, right? Okay. And I think during the during the pandemic period, right, there's a lot of uncertainty in terms of the schedule. Mm -hmm. So you worry about cancellation. Sure. Mm -hmm. uh, can we provide you a cancellation insurance? Uh, okay. Gadget is the same thing as well, right? I mean, like to be honest, gadget is probably the most most important mm -hmm. right? mm -hmm. uh, asset of, of people today, right? Even beyond head and life, to be honest, right? <laughs> wow. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, gadget here we also provide insurance for gadget. Mm. Yes. I've noticed that now that you mentioned it, I've noticed that when I'm on any of my electronic shopping platforms, if I'm about to buy an electronic in particular, they do offer me electronic protection. Oh, this will protect your gadget up to three years, mm -hmm. and I never, I would never would have thought of it if mm -hmm. it wasn't offered to me. Yep. Yes. So it's embedded right in there. In the so do you, do you experience a lot of growth during the pandemic also because of those kind of initiatives? Uh, yes. So uh, so obviously, I think different industries are like seeing a different kind of like uh, impact as well. Like uh, certain industries actually uh, struggle during the pandemic. Uh, but I think uh, most of the industry, I would say, across the digital economy actually gr uh, is growing. Mm -hmm. right? Because uh, suddenly, the uh, pandemic actually forced a behavior where people who prefer to buy offline, so then everybody goes online. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and with this kind of online behavior, to be honest, is also creating a new set of risks. Mm. Uh, if, I, if, I can, if I can give an example, let's say back then I like to buy a clothes, right? I like to go to the offline store, try mm -hmm. to just try it out, sure. whether it fit me or not, right? Now, if I buy that online, I don't know whether it fit me or not. Mm. So true. can we actually provide insurance to say that we can give you a free return? Okay. Mm. So I think we, this this will encourage the online kind of behavior, mm -hmm. and and you know as the industry evolves, the type of insurance also need to evolve, just like how the fintech also need to evolve, right? Right. From the payment perspective, from the lending perspective, and so on. Okay. One of the complications, or what I see as a complication as a consumer, when it comes to insurance, and insure tech is the one I knew least about, is making claims and what am I, you know, what am I eligible for? And there's a lot of, usually a lot of red tape and a lot of uh, things to read through. How does FinTech now ease that process for us, yep. the end user? Yep. So I think, uh, totally agree. I think claim has been, you know, like one of the most important, if not the most important in, in our insure tech journey as well. Okay. Because if you look at insurance product or you look at any kind of like uh, digital products today, right? You're all looking for the, the value. And, and unfortunately, you know, like insurance product, you only feel the value during the claim process. Exactly. That, that is actually where, where you actually feel the experience of the product. Uh, so I think one of the most important things is that it's not just about solving the distribution, access of the insurance product to the customer, but how can we make the claim become easier? Right. How can we make, you know, like a process that used to take two weeks become instant, be, become, uh, we can solve that in the matter of minutes, seconds and so on, right? So the use of technology here will be extremely crucial. But if you look at the awareness as well, the product also need to evolve. You cannot sell a two hundred, three hundred dollars kind of product online. Like yeah. we, as as a as somebody new to insurance, I'm not going to buy two hundred, three hundred dollars for a product. Right. I'm probably quite interested to pay, let's say, two to three dollars. Mm. And I think that, and that's why we are also helping insurance partners to to create this new set of products as well. But this to do with delay gadget and so on. Okay, yeah, so it's something more uh, more in line with the way we live our lives these right. days as well. Mm -hmm.
And you also mentioned that you have offline channel as well, yeah. which is uh, something that you're also about to grow more in the future. Can you share with us about yep. that as well? Uh, yep. So, uh, so I think like as a as an insurtech company, uh, we 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 also believe always on top of like providing a value across value chain. We also need to be able to provide access, regardless. Uh, regardless what touch point the customer engages with, whether it's offline or online. Mm -hmm. And I think in the, in the case of offline, uh, just like many other countries, whether in the you know, US, Europe, uh, India, China and so on, offline play a very critical role in the, in the insurance adoption. Mm -hmm. And uh, so what we, uh, what we does today is like we work together with the intermediary offline sales people, can be in the form of like uh, offline stores, okay. can be in the form of like individual as well. To help us market insurance to the customer, mm. but what we, how we empower them is like we provide this simple application, simple tools, so that they can do that, uh, so that everybody can actually sell insurance in the easy manner. Okay. Uh, so, um, you know, this topic we're discussing today, digital economy, obviously is nothing new. It seems to be the hot topic uh, always among discussions. And um, it was also one of the topics that was discussed at the 2023 ASEAN Summit. So I want to get to your thoughts. Uh, what do you think about the development of digital economy across the Southeast Asian region in particular? Yep, I think digital economy in the past 10 years has seen a massive growth. I think especially in Indonesia, right? I mean, uh, you know, everybody has a very high dependency on their smartphone, but also mostly because they are transacting online. Right? And I think there's, there's also, you know, like uh, further uh, growth through, uh, uh, further grow, right? Because of the development of the fintech as well, mm -hmm. because of the development of the insurance as well. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, like, for example, the, the shop, the offline shopping kind of behavior just now, right? The moment there's an insurance associated where I can just buy my clothing online without the, the needs of worrying that it doesn't fit me, mm -hmm. we encourage them to actually buy online. Mm. I think just like, you know, like from the fintech, from the payment perspective, this will actually give more variety of the payment. From the peer-to-peer -peer lending perspective, this will actually give a financing option as well mm -hmm. uh, for the customer, right? Mm -hmm. so, so overall, you know, like, I see a massive growth of digital economy and I think it's going to continue growing for the next 10, 20 years. Mm -hmm. And I think fintech would, be a, would play a very big role right. in this kind of development. And one word like for me, it's convenience. Yeah. Right? Like every day, I, it saves so much time if I could just do everything online. By the way, congratulations for Koala for raising Series B Plus last Thank year you know. for about 73 million US dollars. What's your future plan for Koala? Yeah, I think I think for us, you know, like we we will continue to invest on the technology aspect mm -hmm. because I think that's what we are strong at, and and we will continue to innovate together with uh, with our insurance partners as well, right? To keep providing even more variety of products to the consumer. Mm -hmm. uh, but obviously, on top of Indonesia, we we are, we also have a presence in Thailand, Malaysia, and Vietnam as well, mm -hmm. and and some of the funding we also goes to these kind of countries as well. Uh, and the reason why that is also important is because. If you look at Thailand, Malaysia, they are more metro market in terms of the insurance right. penetration. And I think by having a presence there, by understanding how, how it has been developed over the past few years, we enable us to you know, speed up the innovation in Indonesia as well. Okay, well, we certainly look forward to more growth from Koala and others in the digital economy sector as well. We thank you for stopping by, Tommy, and right, sharing you your thoughts much with well. us on oh. this topic. And um, that does it for our yeah. talk show for this particular segment. We do have more to come for you in case you missed our earlier segment. We have some other recaps from our latest news stories. And also a quick reminder to follow our social media accounts if you haven't already. You can find us on Instagram, Twitter, and YouTube at C Today News. We'll be right back.